Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Don, I'm a general surgery resident, and today we're gonna talk about a simple way that doctors and surgeons fix collapsed lungs by using chest tubes. So a collapsed lung, medically known as a pneumothorax, can happen for multiple reasons, but the context in which I see it most often is trauma, uh, because as a surgery resident, we do cover some nights in trauma, and when there's any kind of hit to the chest, it can cause the lungs to be damaged and to collapse. It's one of those things that can kill people really fast, so having the tools and the expertise to put in a chest tube really quickly is essential for surgeons. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the physiology of a collapsed lung and the principles by which we fix them. And I'm mostly gonna focus on the principles of the Pleurovac, which is the most simple chest tube drain that you'll see in a hospital. If you're looking to learn how to insert a chest tube, this video is not gonna cover that. So if you like this kind of content and you learn something at the end of it, please feel free to leave a like and drop a comment in the comment section down below. It really does help me know what kind of videos are appreciated by you guys. So first, we'll have a look at how collapsed lungs happen in the first place. So these are a pair of very poorly drawn lungs, but uh, we're not gonna go over the entire physiology of respiration, but all I want you to notice is that uh, outside of the pink stuff is a small space between your ribs and your lungs, which uh, air is gonna get trapped in, in a pneumothorax. Normally that space, which is called the pleural space, is very small, which allows the ribs to expand and kind of pull the lungs with it to expand and allow air in. There's basically two ways that air can come in, either the air from your lungs goes into that space or the air from the outside. So if you get stabbed in the chest, the air from the outside can get into that pleural space and then the wall can kind of seal off and the air can get trapped in that space. The other way this can happen is if you have any kind of lung damage or pathology that allows the air from the lungs to escape outside into that pleural space. The damage doesn't have to be huge, but as soon as you have some break in the integrity of the uh, lung capsule, you'll have air rushing out from inside every time you're taking a breath and basically causing your lung to collapse because the air is not getting back into the lung. This is a problem because when the air inside that space expands and collapses the lung even more, it can push everything including big blood vessels and the heart to the other side. And this is called a tension pneumothorax and it's a medical emergency. So a chest tube is quite simple. We just want to get the air out to the outside and let the lung expand. So that's what a chest tube is doing. We're just basically connecting the pleural space to the outside space with a plastic tube. So you can see once the chest tube is inserted that the air can come out of this pleural space, but it can also easily come back in. So you need to find a way to uh, make a one-way valve or a seal so that the air can only go one way. And the simplest method you can think of is just a valve and that's called a Heimlich valve. I'll show a picture right here. It's basically a little tube that has a small rubber valve. Uh, this is the most simple if you know that there's only air in the pleural space and you'll just let the air come out but no air can come back in. So here I made something just to show you how a Heimlich valve uh, works. It's not too complicated but let me just show you here. But basically I have here just a straw attached to like a piece of balloon um, and it's sealed here but you can see that once I'm gonna push air through it's gonna flap around but the air can't really come back in easily. So if I blow air it comes out pretty smoothly but if I try to suck back in It requires a lot more strength. So you can imagine if a tube like this is in your chest, the air can only rush out, but it won't be able to come back in. So that's basically the principle of a Heimlich valve. More commonly though, once a chest tube is inserted, we're gonna plug it into something called a Pleurovac. And that's just a brand name for this uh, contained collecting system that has a water seal, a collecting system, and a suction control. This Pleurovac can seem quite simple, but it's a very well engineered piece of plastic that I think solves quite a few issues. I'm gonna break it down by using a few plastic bottles to show what each element does. So the most important thing is that you want a water seal, which is basically this first bottle here that I capped with some Play-Doh just to keep it tight. But there's basically one straw in the water and the other straw is in the air. And the straw that's contacting the water is the one that's gonna be attached directly to the chest. As the air comes out of the chest, it'll bubble and evacuate from the other end, but air won't be able to go back in because of the water seal. This basically acts as a one-way valve, just like the Heimlich. So once you have that water seal, you can pretty much control the pneumothorax because you know that the air won't rush back in so easily. The problem is you might have some blood inside the pleural space as well as some uh, air, in which case we call that a hemothorax, but you also can have other just kinds of fluids or pus or other things that you want to measure and drain as well. And you can see the problem with this water seal is that it would just get mixed in with your water that is sealing uh, off the, uh, the chest. 
And this is where the second element of the Pluravac comes in, and that's the uh, collecting system. This second bottle represents the collecting system in which usually it's gonna be blood or serous fluid that goes in there. And it's really just a bottle with an input and output. By connecting it to the previous bottle, you can have that water seal because the air is not interrupted, but you'll have a separate container for which blood will drip into. The third bottle or element of a Pluravac is basically a way to control how much suction you're putting. So how much air you're gonna help the lung take out because the lung is gonna expand and push the air out, but you can also use some help from suction uh, to pull the, uh, the air out and kind of make the lung stick to the chest wall. One way to do that is to control the suction attached to the wall usually uh, directly, but the Pluravac itself has a way to change the suction and to control how much suction is actually happening um, regardless of the suction plugged into the wall. So this third bottle represents that suction control, which is just one straw uh, connected down into the water and then one input and output that are not touching the water. So the straw you see there is not actually connected to the system, it's connected to the outside air and it has a column of water. Below a certain level of suction, the air is just gonna rush through and not go through that straw, but just go into the plastic input and output. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that there is a certain level of suction that is predetermined at which level the air will rush into the straw as it overcomes the column of water and this determines a maximum amount of suction that can be taken from the pleural space. As you can see here the column of water is going down but it's not completely overcome and air is not rushing through yet but a certain amount of suction will allow the air to rush in as you're seeing right now. Basically the Pluravac has a way of controlling the amount of water in there and if there's less water the maximum suction will be less because the air will basically bypass um, the system as it's going through the straw into the suction. So you can combine them all together and it looks like a cheap moonshine setup, but it shows how the Pluravac works uh, in separate containers. So this side is going to be connected to your chest tube that's directly into your pleural space. So the first bottle is where you're collecting your blood and other fluids that you can measure. The air rushes to the second bottle, goes into the water seal and travels up and air cannot go past because of the water. And the third bottle is just your suction control, which has a predetermined maximum amount of suction based on the column of water that you set in the Pluravac. And the last tube here would be connected to your wall suction. And now I'm acting as the wall suction just to show you how the whole system would still work. Here by plugging my finger on the system, it's representing when all of the air is out of the pleural space, in which case you see that things are just well sealed and air can't rush back in. Here's a diagram summarizing what I've explained. So you can see how all of these elements put together allow you to fix uh, a uh, collapsed lung by pushing the air out and not letting air back in, by collecting blood or other kinds of fluids in that pleural space and measuring exactly, and also control the suction and the amount that you want to help the lung stick to the wall. All of this stays in place until the lung can heal, in which case you just remove the chest tube and hopefully the lung will kind of just stick up and stay up. One thing people refer to when they talk about chest tubes and drainage is what they call an air leak. And what, how we test that in the hospital is that when a patient has a chest tube inside, we ask them to cough. So they cough. <coughs> and so by coughing, they're creating a lot of pressure in that space. And if there's air that is still going into that space and they cough, it'll be pushed out and it will bubble in the little box and you can see that happening. So in general, you don't wanna see bubbling in the Pluravac because that still indicates that there's some air uh, that's coming out of your chest. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today. I hope you learned something and that I made it interesting but also simple enough for uh, people outside of the medical field to understand. If you did learn something, please share this video, drop a comment. And again, if you wanna see more of this kind of content, please let me know and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.